Okay, this is video 11 on my thoughts on the 50 problems with the Mormon Church video found on YouTube. This is one of several that's still been on the topic of plural marriage or polygamy in the church. And we'll go ahead and review the, uh, the slides discussing that topic and get started again. Joseph married at least 34 women, many without Emma's consent, as forbidden in the Doctrine and Covenants, and 11 of whom were already married, some without their husbands knowing. Ten of Joseph's wives were teenagers, some as young as 14. This was shocking, even by 19th century standards. Joseph also married some of his foster daughters. Joseph used a variety of methods to coerce women into marrying him, including promises of eternal life, threats of damnation, and even claiming that he himself was under the threat of an angel with a flaming sword. President Hinckley publicly said, polygamy isn't doctrinal, despite teachings by numerous early church leaders, including Brigham Young, that it was essential for exaltation. The only scriptural justification for polygamy is to multiply and replenish the earth. So either Joseph was sleeping with his 14-year-old wives, or he wasn't adhering to the scriptural laws. Joseph married Fanny Alger years before he had the sealing power, or received any revelation on polygamy. Brigham Young taught Adam God Theory at General Conference, and as part of the Temple Endowment Ceremony. This doctrine is now disavowed by the Church. Okay, so, <clears throat> on this slide it mentioned uh, Joseph marries 34 women, uh, even some without Emma's knowledge, and then it says even that was forbidden in the Doctrine and Covenants. So, yeah, let's get on the Doctrine and Covenants section, uh, business here. So, at a time when Joseph, Joseph Smith came under fire, there were, there were uh, rumors going around uh, it's kind of hard to keep some of this stuff uh, completely under wraps that was going on. And there came a time when there was talk. There were whispers. And uh, he apparently came under some pressure. Now, Joseph Smith was pretty darn good at getting revelations when he seemed to need one. And uh, in the Doctrine and Covenants, he placed a revelation as so it were stating that the church absolutely believed in only monogamy absolutely you could not have more than one wife and basically I don't recall it even giving any excuse for having uh, two wi living wives I don't, I don't even know about divorce being uh, okay in any circumstance there said so, you know if your other wife's dead then you can uh, and you can remarry. So it was, it was pretty explicit, seemed to go along with the uh, New Testament uh, theme there when Jesus says, uh, if, if you put away a wife, you cause her to commit adultery, unless it, it was for the cause of adultery, in case she was already committing adultery anyway. But anyway, um, so that was actually in the Doctrine and Covenants. And it stayed in the Doctrine and Covenants for a long time after he was dead and while Brigham was practicing plural relationships and I made a mistake in an earlier video I said when that Revelation 132 was published in 1843 it wasn't published in 1843 it was recorded by somebody maybe it was Warren Parrish you know one of his scribes or maybe it was Hiram um, no, you see, the church was supposed to be, revelations were supposed to be approved by common consent. And in the uh, Book of Commandments, the, that's the type of thing that it said. One of the items about changing, you know, trashing the Book of Commandments, even though most of the copies were, many copies had been destroyed with the printing press because the Missourians weren't too appreciative of, of some of the doctrines being taught in it. You know, like God was going to kick them out of Missouri because it was a land only for the uh, LDS folks. So, um, 
at any rate, um, when we got the Doctrine and Covenants, some of those revelations, word for word, from Jesus Christ to Joseph Smith or speaking through Joseph Smith, well, guess what? They weren't all the same anymore. They changed. Jesus actually said something different than they wrote down the first time. Imagine that, huh? So, uh, and some of these gave Joseph Smith more power and authority than the revelations gave before. So common consent was uh, a theme early in the church, but it quickly became a situation where Joseph Smith was all-powerful. As we kind of saw in section 132, uh, that theme is being carried out that he's, he's just got absolute power. So um, as far as the revelation goes with uh, 132, that was something that he taught publicly. He didn't submit that revelation for consent or approval or sustaining to the church at all. And he was actually publicly saying that he supported the law of the land, that the church was based on monogamy completely, that uh, polygamy was wrong and was considered adultery. and. Uh, denied accusations of being involved with anyone other than Emma, his wife. There's the rather famous public speech quote that he made very shortly before his demise, uh, saying something like, uh, what a thing it is to accuse a man of adultery. They say I have seven wives, but I can only find one. Maybe he wasn't looking very hard at the moment. You know, maybe he had his fingers crossed. Uh, obviously, he had relationships with a lot of other women, uh, despite his wife, Emma, later as a widow, uh, denying it and telling her son, Joseph Smith III, that, that daddy was not uh, a polygamist. But there, the, the data is overwhelming, and the church admits it. So... Why was he not telling the truth in public? Why was he not telling that to the saints? Only his inner circle knew what was going on, and those who were participating in these in pluralistic relationships, uh, some cases maybe described as open marriages. Even I've read, you know, diary things and so forth about the absolute uh, depravity or uh, <clears throat> just the wild way things were going on in Nauvoo. So speaking of Nauvoo, Joseph Jackson was brought in as a confidant of Joseph Smith. Joseph Jackson says his, he, you know, he had uh, affidavits filled out and so forth, witnesses to him for his purpose becoming uh, in the inner circle of Joseph Smith and it was to expose what he felt was wrong that he felt was wrong that Joseph Smith was doing so a non-member of the church being in Joseph Smith's inner circle very trusted and was brought into the Council of 50 and the government of the Kingdom of God um, as attested, as attested to by John D. Lee, who also was part of that, and a high-ranking Danite, uh, not only during the time of Joseph Smith, but with Brigham Young, who, as I mentioned earlier, had was sealed. He was sealed to as an adopted son, his second son. That he was, he said he should have been the first, but he, 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 uh, he gave way to an, another fellow who had asked second to be his second son who was uh, older than him or something anyway uh, it, multiple multiple people corroborate these kind of things that were going on and that Nauvoo was pretty wild so Joseph Jackson what did he have to say he he doesn't go along with this 34 women deal at all he said he said that Joseph Smith told him that he'd had his way with at least 400 women so 
that's no Wilt Chamberlain, but it's a lot more than 34. Said he'd enjoyed over 400 women, I believe were some of the words. They had something going called the spiritual wife system, according to Joseph Jackson and also according to John C. Bennett, who was excommunicated when it became public knowledge that he was a ladies' man, besides being married and in the first presidency. He had risen quickly in the ranks as a confidant of Joseph Smith, and I believe he was involved in numerous uh, political power plays, helping get the Nauvoo Charter uh, you know, for the city and the Nauvoo Legion, and maybe, maybe was involved in training the Nauvoo Legion, and so forth. So it didn't look right when uh, it was found out that he, he was the ladies' man. Now, according to Sarah Pratt, the wife of Orson Pratt, now she felt she had a good marriage and wasn't willing to give in to Joseph Smith when he went after her when her husband was off on a mission. She, uh, she said she, she started off with a good husband and polygamy ruined him. And... Uh, she eventually divorced him in Utah, though he was an apostle. She couldn't handle what was going on with the uh, plural marriage scene. She described Joseph Smith as the most lascivious man I have ever met, and Brigham as the most bloodthirsty. That blood atonement doctrine, Brigham apparently took pretty seriously, and we'll deal with that in, uh, in a future uh, video. So Sarah Pratt's an interesting information source, and she's got kind of a dramatic story. And before I get to one of the things she said, the question is, well, if, if polygamy is supposed to be for uh, procreation purposes, gaining seed for the Lord, then if Joseph was marrying all these women, and that's the purpose, well, where are the babies? Well, if he had about a dozen girls that were... Uh, married to other men and they weren't doing DNA testing who knows what was going on with that what about the other girls the single girls well Sarah Pratt says that uh, John C. Bennett Dr. John C. Bennett actually was covering for Joseph Smith when pregnancies would arise she uh, said he'd take care of the problem and showed her an instrument used for abortions now, that's about that's about all we've got on on that particular subject. She's so could be called hearsay, but uh, where are the babies? She talked about a sister Durfee who was part of the part of the uh, spiritual wife system, an older gal who would uh, go and visit the new prospect girls, the girls that Joseph wanted, and tell them that he'd ever had a revelation and so forth regarding them, and was instrumental in procuring some of these relationships. Uh, people like uh, Joseph Jackson and or uh, John D. Lee talked about the miserable state that many of these women lived in, the spiritual wives, Many of them were not among these uh, 34. Uh, and uh, the horrible conditions that they lived under, uh, emotional and physical and so forth. And uh, Joseph Jackson talks about his conversations with Joseph Smith and with Hiram. Hiram talking about how he could set him up with uh, some of these ladies that are in the, uh, in the circuit there, in the group and that Hiram had a few of his favorites that he liked to frequent. So those insiders finished the story with Joseph sending Hiram over to uh, William Law and his wife and uh, proposing an open marriage relationship saying that uh, Emma had the hots for President William Law. Uh, they reject it. William Law and some others print up uh, an expose on Joseph Smith, uh, Section 132 marriage doctrine, the spiritual wife system activity that they were doing, and uh, Joseph's the mayor, he can't have this, he illegally has the press destroyed and winds up in Carthage jail uh, on that and then charges of treason as uh, attempted 
king of the world uh, on the, with the kingdom of God overthrowing the United States.